people of the internet. It, the year is 2022 and we are doing my first mountain bike check. I am lucky enough to have one of the coolest looking bikes on the planet. This is the Scott Spark RC World Cup Axis. Scott puts out the Spark as their trail and cross country bike. The RC means it's their XC racing bike. World Cup means it's the same bike you'll see on the World Cup circuit under riders like Kay Courtney and Nino Schurter. And Axis means it's got the SRAM Axis group set. First thing you can see is the frame set is pretty rad. Scott's hidden the rear shock in the frame this time. So they've really been pushing integration on the road and gravel and now they've brought that into the mountain bike side with cable and hidden rear shock. Now it's more than just like a cool looking thing. It actually lets the suspension or the rear shock sit lower, lower center of gravity. And the way it mounts, you can see there's really huge bearings there. And that lets it have a lateral stiffness that's greater than the previous model. And I have noticed that, you know, on a really fast chattery descents and also just standing up and sprinting, you can definitely feel it's a stiffer rear end. Some people are a little, you know, hesitant to hide stuff like that because of maintaining the bike and working on it. But Scott's got a trap door on the down tube there, which it's really easy to get in there, adjust the rebound. And there's also a port on the seat tube that lets you check the O-ring on your shock to see if you're using your full suspension. And then one other thing is the sag meter reading. That's also on the outside of the frame, really smart there by Scott. So you can actually check that with just one person, you know, sitting on the bike yourself. And then obviously it keeps the rear shock clean. You know, if you're riding a lot of mud, that helps a lot. Out here, we've got tons of dust. So that, you know, should help you keep the shock cleaner and also have lower maintenance issues, which is good for someone like me, who's kind of a once a year maintenance person. Just looking at the frame, you can see the paint, a cool mix of retro graphics, colors, and a very modern frame set. Scott's gone all matte for this one and it's just a beautiful looking bike. I get a lot of compliments and I really love riding it. The hardest thing about this bike check is standing here for 10 minutes talking and not actually riding this thing. It's like really addictive. We go out for two hour rides that become three hour rides and three hour rides become four hour rides. So it's just a ton of fun to ride this bike. Let's move forward here and check out the front shock. It's the RockShox Sid Select Plus. 120 mil of travel, the same as the rear shock. So that's a really progressive mountain bike and that's why Scott's been getting a lot of kudos this year. They've been pushing a bit more than most brands in terms of travel. Scott's added the Fraser IC SL XC bars. This is a one piece uh, bar stem combo in the World Cup edition and higher. It's got a matching paint job. So that's a really nice touch. And they've got the integration here. So all the cables that need to go through for the rear lockout, uh, the dropper post and the rear brake feed through the frame now. And they've got this front end looking really clean. Now, I am a big fan of the twin lock. If you guys don't know what that is, that means you can have three settings fully unlocked. Your front and rear suspension's open. Great for descending, doing jumps, having fun, going fast downhill over bumpy stuff. Then the middle setting, that's called the traction control. And that's what I use a lot. And that's why I really like the twin lock for where I ride because of the tons of climbs and the kind of bumpier stuff where you don't want to be losing all your steam through the suspension sprinting, but it's not smooth enough to be fully locked. So I use that on rough climbs and then you can also fully lock it out, which is obviously great for tarmac and just really smooth sections. And this is a super solid lockout. There's no give at all. So yeah, with the cable integration here on these new bars, what you can also do, without detaching any cables, you can pull the bar up, flip around the headset cups, and that'll give you an extra 0.6 degrees to make it a little bit slacker if you wanted to run this more as a trail bike. Um, with the lockout and the dropper post, they've actually included that both into one side over here underneath the brakes. So that's a new system from Scott that makes it super handy to just flip through dropper and lockout all in uh, one place with your left thumb. On the other end here, we've got the Access GX rocker from SRAM that communicates wirelessly with the gears, one less cable. And then we've got a mix here. Scott's been doing that. They've put on the Shimano XTR brakes and the SRAM group set. I guess they favor the braking of the XTR. I'm a big fan of them too. I've got the Hammerhead Karoo 2 on here, just like I have on all my bikes. This mounts to a um, Synchros integrated mount that bolts onto the um, top cap. So that's what we've got up front. On the rear end of the bike, we have a Fox Transfer SL seat post. This is the lightest dropper on the market, I think. Definitely the lightest from Fox. It's either um, up or down. 
There's no middle setting, but there's 100 mil of travel. On top, we've got the Physique Argo R1, same one I'm running on my road bike actually. 150 millimeters wide, short nose saddle, big cutout, carbon rails, nice and comfy. Find this actually a really great mountain bike saddle, even though it is probably more designed for road. Underneath the saddle, we've got the Plan B saddlebag from Skin Grows Back. Nice uh, yellow and gray to match the frame. Always cool to keep your tools looking good. It's super firm locker mechanism. It's not gonna go anywhere. So moving down the bike, you can see one of my favorite features and another great reason why they've integrated the rear shock is two bottle cages. I was often having to kind of plan my routes around water up here, there's hardly any, and it gets really hot. So having two cages is a huge plus for me. I have the SRAM X01 group set with the 32 chainring up front, carbon cranks. I sent those off to Four Eyes for their Podium Pro dual sided power meter install. Nice to have power for my training and just to keep on top of the long climbs, keep the power up, keep pushing myself. And with that front chainring, you can actually run up to a 40 tooth if you're a real mean cross country racer. So that's another great feature of this frame set. On those cranks, I have the Time Attack 4 pedals. I've been using Time pedals for almost 20 years. My go-to for sure, never gonna change. It's got the X01 rear derailleur, which has been rock solid. Really great to adjust on the fly too with the electronic paddle. Really enjoying the 12-speed here on SRAM. 10 to 52 is a huge range, so more than enough for all the climbing as well as the descending. And then we've got these amazing wheels. I'm really stoked. This is something that doesn't come on the spike. I've spec this myself. I grabbed these DT Swiss XMC 1200 splines. These are their all mountain wheel set, but they're really light. They're, you know, 1500 grams, which is solidly inside of competitive XC range. And they're 30 millimeters wide internal, 30 millimeters deep. So deeper than a lot of lightweight wheels and they're designed to take a beating as their all mountain wheel. So this is exactly what I need on this bike because this bike hammers down hills, climbs fast, and this is the best of both worlds. They've got the DT180 hubs, which are their top of the line hubs, ceramic bearings, and also the Aerolite spokes up front and the Aerocomp bladed spokes up back, a little uh, bigger gauge on the rear, of course, for a little more hammering that the rear wheel takes. And then the discs on the front and rear, it's a 180 front, 160 rear. Those are the Shimano Ice Tech discs with the XTR calipers. So on those DT wheels, I've got the Vittoria Sierras. 2.4, I run them tubeless and I've been having a great time on them. Tons of grip. I think the tread pattern is good. And yeah, I think the Vittoria compounds are just a cut above all the other compounds out there. The sidewalls on these seem really solid. I have cut sidewalls on other brands and you can see there's kind of a few scratches and stuff in these from just super rocky fast descents, but no issues, no cuts. I'm really enjoying these and I think I'm gonna stay on them for a while. So that's plenty talking from me. We're gonna go shoot some fun on the trails. I just love riding this thing, so yeah. I gotta get out of here. Yeah.